Alright guys, and welcome to Oceanic Gaming's Aegis Allegiance Gauntlet. So, that's a bit of a mouthful, but there you go. We're gonna see Nivius vs Team VGR. This is uh, VGR Reborn, as we've been calling them in the studio, as they have a pretty much completely different lineup to the regular one. So, these are some of the best solo queue players on the Oceanic server. We've got from diamonds to challenges, and quite a, f quite a handful of challenges actually. Some I'm really looking forward to this. I will be solo casting the first couple of games. Hopefully we will get a duo caster on with me in the fullness of time. But until then you'll just have to bear with the sound of my voice, which I hope is okay. So pick and ban phase seems very targeted in my opinion. I know these players very well from solo queue. I've played with them all quite a lot, a couple of hundred games. And I'm seeing just target bans. So you Target ban Lee Sin and Renekton against I Am a Dempt. He's a very, very proficient top laner. He plays Lee Sin and Renekton almost exclusively and to a very high level, as you'd expect after you know a couple hundred games on those champions in the challenger level. The Caitlyn ban will be a ban at Nincompoop, the AD carry. Uh, that's his comfort zone as well, so it's always nice to take that away. You can also ban out Caitlyn, so Vayne is available uh, as Caitlyn as the standard lane counter to them. So there are over a hundred champions and basically the idea is to ban out what you're not good against. There's so few bans compared to the amount of picks nowadays that you don't have the luxury of getting everyone you want and taking away everyone that they're going to play really. So you, you play the heroes that you are best at and you ban what you can't deal with. That is pretty much the standard. Uh, if you can get away with counter picks, like uh, Team Nivius has done in this pick and ban phase. It's always good. But uh, otherwise, we'll move on to VGR's bans. Uh, the band Zach and Jarvan, both incredibly flavor of the month champions. Um, they've just been played recently in the LCS and the OGN and all the playoffs. So very popular. Zach can be played both top and jungle, and he's a sustained monster, green blob. Uh, Jarvan. He can play mid and top and jungle, so he's a good ban as well. And Corky is a target ban for worst player of NZ. Uh, worst player is a very, very good AD carry, probably one of the best on this server, right up there with Raider. He is, of course, challenger and pretty much beats everyone in lane. So, already a couple of picks locked in. We've seen Trinia locking in Shen. There's Elise, in the, probably in the jungle. She's really fallen out of favor in lane, but we could be surprised. Vladimir has also been locked in. Uh, the reason I like these Vlad and Elise picks is because they're very deceptive. You don't know which lane they're going to be running, so that denies you the luxury of counter picking. Uh, you'll, you'll probably work out where they're going after the next two picks, uh, after the next two players have you know locked in an AD carry or support. You'll get a clearer idea, but Vlad can be run mid or top, and Elise can be run mid, top, and jungle, so it's always good to have those picked up first, just so you have that. You're, you don't know where I'm going, you can't pick, you know, the hardest counter in the book. So I actually had Vi and Ari locked in for Team Nivius. So Vi uh, hasn't seen too much play lately, except in the Korean servers, and I really like her. Uh, she's also fantastic against a champion like Varus, with no inherent escape. She's good against Twitch as well, as we do see Nincompoop swapping through his champions, deciding who to play. Uh, Ari has been the most picked and most banned champion recently in professional play as well. And the reason for that is she has ridiculous burst potential, ridiculous mobility. Uh, she is great at initiating if she lands a charm. She's great at kiting back if she does get caught out. And these are all good things that you look for on a champion. Uh, most Aries are now running a instant death by grasp and just looking to burst someone before the fight even really starts. So we are going to see Varus. Actually, no, I take that back. Commentator's curse. Bane. And Diana locked in. So with the Caitlyn ban, you feel a little bit more confident in picking up that vein because you know you're not going to be outranged horrendously the entire game. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw worst player pick a Ash, as he's very well known in that. Uh, the Diana and Ari matchup is it's actually all right. Uh, Diana has kill potential post six, I feel. Uh, although Ari is very maneuverable, it really comes down to the individual skill of these players. So it's going to be good anyway. We're actually hovering over a Cogmore. We do not see the Coggles at all on this server. Uh, we don't see it 
at all, actually. It's a very rare pick. I've seen it more mid than I have seen an, an 80 carry in the last six months. So Cog and Sona are being soft locked for Team Nivius. So it'll be really interesting to see if those are locked in. It would give them the late game scaling. Uh, it is a little bit of a protect the Cogmore team comp. Uh, Vi can blow someone up. Ari can blow someone up. Shen and Sona very good at protecting that Cog. So Janna is the, the more picked champion when you are running Cogmore just because she can do that disengage. Sona very effective as well though. And those are locked in. So I'm excited to see that. Uh, it'll be cool to watch it against a Vayne. I'm not sure about how this lane plays out. Uh, it's going to be very dependent on the support they pick. Because if you can lock down Cogwell before it gets that ridiculous late game, that's pretty much the, the best way to handle him. You, you don't ever want to be in a situation where Cog has six items. Because he's just going to right-click your team and they're just going to disappear, really. Uh, much more so than a Vayne. And Vayne is the one you traditionally associate with hard hyper-scaling. Uh, Cogmore blows her out of the water, so that's saying a lot. Alright, so, we're actually hovering over Soraka. I'd be very surprised if that was locked in. Alright, so, we've swapped, swapping around. We'll see what happens. I won't speak about it until it's locked in, because I feel like that's all I mean. And we have actually had someone leave the lobby. So, let's see what's happening. Last pick is Janna, but the champ the guy didn't own it, so he's just gonna jump back in. Um, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna restart the lobby, we're gonna pick exactly the same champions, and they're all just gonna instantly lock it in so we'll get straight into the delay and we won't have extra time on our hands. Alright, so everyone's back into the lobby uh, as soon as it has started. We'll see exactly the same picks and hopefully the same bands, and we'll get straight back into it. So the last pick is Janna, so we're going to see a Vayne and Janna against Cogmore and Sona. Uh, Cog played very well, can be scary. Uh, his Bio Arcane Barrage, which extends his range, is a very effective tool to harass. And there's no sustain in the bot lane for Vayne and Janna. They don't have a heal or anything like that. They're going to be relying on Janna Storm Shields to mitigate auto attack damage. And they're going to be relying on Vayne's Lifesteal and Doran's Blade to get her HP back. So it was a surprising pick, in my opinion, to have that Janna locked in. Um, I would have suggested running something more aggressive. There was no Thresh ban, there was no Blitz ban. Uh, there was no Lulu ban, which would have been very effective against the Cogmore. So, it's surprising. Let's see if it works out for Team VGR. Uh, John is actually very good against Shen and Ari, being able to blow them blow them away and stop them engaging on your team. So, it could have been more looking towards the teamfight oriented play rather than just the lane play. But still, I feel like that pick is going to make Cogmore's laning phase easier, and that's something you never want to give him. Alright, so everyone's been locked in, um, we are seeing the Janna picks, and we've got 35 seconds left until the 3 minute delay starts. So I've talked a little bit about how I feel Cogmore's going to have an easier time against Vayne, just because of the support picks. Uh, Sona is a more aggressive support, which will relax the pressure on Cogmore, so he's going to be able to see us more successfully. Uh, Vi against Elise in the jungle. Um, Elise is still very strong. Uh, she went through a round of nerfs, but that didn't seem to change her popularity too much. I feel like instead of nerfing her into the ground and into oblivion, they did a good job of making her balanced. She can be punished a lot more heavily now, especially in tower dives, just because she doesn't get that instant disengage from the spiderlings when she comes out from the repel. Uh, there was a couple of other changes, but that was the main one in my eyes, that her tower diving pressure was reduced almost extensively. So Vi is pretty good at dueling with her, um, as much as any jungler can be. Gank efficiency is fairly similar for both of them, at least might be a little bit better because she can repel in into a cocoon, but uh, post 6 Vi definitely has the advantage there as she has double gap closes. Uh, there's also going to be the global presence applied from Shen Stan United, which there is no global presence from Team VGR to answer that. That's fairly standard, uh, they're not running a teleport or anything. 
But then again, Vlad or Diana aren't the traditional champions you do run teleport in. So that's very understandable. Um, they had the luxury of, you know, deciding do we want to take that and they decided against it. So they do know that it's going to commonly be 3v2s or, you know, 2v1s because of that Shen presence. Uh, meanwhile, in the lane matchup, Shen against Vlad is fairly stalemate in my opinion, especially considering the Shen is going to be going very tanky and the Vlad doesn't really pick up momentum until he's built the first core item, which is usually a Spirit of the, Spirit of the Spectral Wraith. And as soon as he gets to that point, I wouldn't be surprised to see that Shin has bought magic resistance. So it's a bit of a wet noodle fight. They don't have kill potential on one another without outside influence, in my opinion. They could prove me wrong. They could run straight at each other and die instantly. But I'm not expecting to see a death to either one of the laners without a jungler being there, or without a mid laner being there, or some other, you know, outside influence. Uh, in the mid lane, this is the one I'm least qualified to talk about, as I am Diamond 1 in everything except the mid lane. Ari against Diana. I feel like Ari can bully Diana early. Uh, Diana still has the ability to CS both with her Q and her shield, so she can shield herself and get CS. Uh, post level 6. I still feel like it's going to be very hard to get a kill down without an outside influence. Diana can dash to Ari. Ari can dash away. If she lands the charm, things can be different. If Diana gets resets, it can be different. Uh, it's all very situational. Uh, it's going to be very dependent on the first five levels. How well can they see us? What core items are they going for? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see an early Abyssal Scepter out from either of them. Uh, that's pretty standard when the, the person's bringing that much damage. Uh, Abyssal Scepter is a little bit worse against Ari than it is against Diana, as Ari's Orb of Deception does have a true damage component, which you can't mitigate in any way, shape, or form, so there's always that. Alright, and we've got five seconds left on the delay, and we'll be getting into the loading screen to see these delicious skins. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping these guys are all running skins. I'll be very disappointed if they're not. There are definitely some cool ones for those champions. Um, Elise, in fact, is actually getting a Victorious skin. The, the Victorious skin will be gifted if you are gold and higher, which these players definitely are. Alright, we're actually seeing Muse Sona, which is cool. Uh, Lion Dance Cogmore. Ugh. Why are you not running the ugly butterfly, man? Letting me down. Uh, Death Blossom Elise, Dragon Slayer Vane, and Not Connected. Wow. That's a skin we see all too often. Alright, so just talking a little bit about summoner spells, we're actually being thrown no curveballs at all. There's no teleports, there's no cleanses, there's no clairvoyances, there's no heals. It's just gonna be flash, exhaust, ignite, and smite, as you'd expect. So, I wouldn't be surprised if we see very standard meta lanes. Um, neither of these players have played together to the point where they're comfortable with lane switches, in my opinion. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see what we saw in North America in every single game. Two in the bot lane, AD carry and support, mages in the mid lane, bruises in the top lane, and junglers, uh, I, where would junglers be guys? Come, have me out. So in saying that, we're very good at the standard meta. So these players are very experienced, they'll know exactly what to do. Um, They'll know how to freeze, they'll know how to push, and all that kind of good stuff that you'd expect. And I wouldn't be surprised if Team Nivius, the blue team, have better dragon control, just due to the fact that Shen can come down with Stan United and Vladimir has to walk. And that is one lazy as a vampire. Doesn't have great move speed, doesn't have any move speed steroids. It's not even running Ghost, like you sometimes see on Vlad, so... But we're having extra people down there. Vi is also very good at killing Dragon. Um, just because of the denting blows, being able to do the percentage damage, it's always a good thing. So we will be getting straight into it. I wouldn't be surprised to see if we saw a small pause while uh, Not Connected does connect. Time is what you need. Time. And we'll be getting into it. Everyone is showing it 100% for me. And here we go. So it is just the Diana that's having trouble. And here we go. 
And the pause has come out. Uh, don't worry, guys. It will be very short. I'm just assuming that the Diana had a small, small problem with the loading screen. It's happened more and more recently in the latest couple of patches. Uh, generally, what happens is you can't actually reconnect while everyone else is loading. You have to wait for the game to start, then you can come in. So, he should have everything fine. It's probably not an internet can issue, it's probably just a client issue. Which, unfortunately, we're all far too familiar with. He's having insane pain, sorry, oops. Uh, that's that's pretty funny, and we have got the reconnect. I'll just make sure as soon as they start, I have synced up with live, because I don't want to be seeing what you guys. Well, I do want to be seeing what you guys are seeing. Yeah, unfortunate otherwise. Time is what you need. So yeah, while you wait, um. You could like us on Facebook, you could hit that purple follow button under the stream, or YouTube, or any of that other social media. I'm sure there's a GIF in the bottom left hand corner that says follow us, and all that kind of good stuff. It really does help us out. Uh, we can get better everything for you guys, Big, bigger prize pools, better better tournaments, and everything you could really hope for in New Zealand esports. Alright, and I am live now. So, the players are grouping up. As far as level 1s go, it's fairly similar in terms of what might happen. Uh, no one's put a point into their skills yet. No, I take that back. Cogmore has, and Sona has. However, the other members have not. So, as soon as we get into it, we'll see what happens. Uh, Ari's Charm and Shin's Taunt can be picked up very quickly, and they may look for a first blood that way. But it looks like it's going to be very defensive. All of VGR beside red, and they think that Nivius might be invading their red buff. Which, it honestly looks like they, they are doing. They're all sitting there at the entrance, and they might head up. There's been a ward put over, um, over the wall, so if they see them coming in, something could go very wrong here. And Shen might be running up there to check. They're actually all backing away, so nothing is going to happen for this, this first fight. And Nivius do get a ward down on the red buff, which is their original intentions, and everyone seems to be peeling away to their lanes. So I'm surprised that VGR didn't stand in the bush, and at the same time, I'm very glad they didn't. Uh, if Shen did put an early point in taunt, he could have taunted all five men, and that would have been the end of someone, at least. It would have definitely be resulted in a first blood, where whether it's Shen getting caught because he has just dived into five people, or it could have been a member of VGR that he got taunted and everyone followed up. So it was a wise decision to back off. No one picked up anything, and that's probably how they wanted it. So Elise is actually starting on the red buff. Uh, that could be because it's warded, uh, because she didn't want it to be invaded. That could have been because uh, there's a double lane swap happening. So usually you start where the AD carry and support are, and that's exactly what they did. So Cogmore and Sona are in the top lane. So that's interesting. They both initiated this lane swap, probably hoping to be against the <laughs> the other person's top laner. So Vayne and Sona were looking to 2v1 the Shen, and Cog and Sona were probably looking to 2v1 the Blood. I think I said the same names twice, but that's alright. You guys understood completely what I meant. And already we're seeing some nice harass from West Player onto this Vayne. So the, the Storm Shield has already gone out. That Bio Arcane Barrage lasts for 8 seconds, whereas Storm Shield only lasts for 5. So that means there's a 3 second window, no matter what happens, that Cogmore can be hitting this vein. And that hurts. That really does. Cogmore does AP Shred. He has Doran's Blade. Uh, he has the Sona Aura as well. Getting some nice damage down. Meanwhile, in the, the mid lane, um, Arya's got a bit of a free learning phase pre-6 can put down more pressure and all, all that kind of good stuff just because it is ranged against melee. And just like Dota, just like Dota 2, that's always a little bit more beneficial for the ranged person. Nice Tornado coming up from Vol Support in the top lane. Just knocking them up, making the laning phase a little bit harder. Um, he's got to be very careful that he doesn't blow through his mana. His mana pool, rather. Because they are going to be very reliant on that Storm Shield to mitigate the harass. Uh, Hero actually misses the charm, lands it on a creep in the mid lane. 
Otherwise, you could have got some nice harass onto the Diana. There was no kill potential there, but it's always good to blow up some HP if you have that opportunity. Elise is roaming top, looking for maybe a gank on those two members, whereas Vi is roaming bottom. She's actually just going to pick up golems, so the golems never saw it coming. Uh, successful gank there, um, and they're both going to die. So, Nivius 1, creep 0. Good job. At least staying in his top push, being very patient. This is something I always admire in junglers. Knowing that Elaine is pushing, she has that luxury of sitting there and maybe making something happen. I wouldn't be surprised if the cocoon was aimed at Sona, not Cogmore. And that's just because Barrier, at this level, is going to protect 175 damage. And that is more than enough to keep her alive, in my opinion. Sona, however, does not have that. She also has lower resists and a lower HP pool. So Sona would be the ideal target to fire this cocoon on. So, Vayne and Janna are doing a very good job here of not telegraphing the game. And here we go, worst player's already flashed, Cocoon is gonna miss, and... That was a successful gank in that a summoner spell is now down, so that if Elise comes back in the next 5 minutes, while that cooldown is up, they're gonna have... A, a easier gank on this Cogmo. Not a free gank, but an easier gank. Uh, Ninky Poop was trying to get some harass in. He got sadly disabused with that notion, though. Uh, Sona got a nice power cord, slapped him in the face, and Bane's like, well, uh, <laughs> didn't really enjoy that. But, uh, live and learn. Elise is now starting a rotation again. She is slightly behind in CS, as this guy really was just sitting there and jungling the entire duration of that camp in the top lane. Uh, talking about CS, in the mid lane it is 39 to 34 in favor of Ari, and the bot lane it is 32 to 26 in favor of Shen. So Nivius are definitely up at this point in time, only 300 gold. Uh, that is an advantage, you shouldn't discount advantages at any stage in the game, but it is a minor one. Uh, 300 gold can come and go in seconds really, so nothing to speak of. Uh, there's been a pink ward put down in the river so that Elise can come back. Cockmore has his barrier, but his flash isn't up for another four and a half minutes. So if the cocoon does go down, there is kill potential there. Especially if Vayne can chain that with a condemn. She might have to flash to get the condemn, but it's probably worth it if she will secure the kill. So all summoner spells are up for everyone else except this cog's flash. So there is an exhaust as well for Sona. Probably gonna put it down on the Elise. Elise has actually shown herself has come into the lane, is trying to, gonna, probably gonna land a cocoon here. Actually lands a cocoon, the damn is good as well. Shen ultimate is up, however. Stand United, first blood. Shen, Stand United, doesn't bring it as Cogmore died. And a successful first blood to the vein. Uh, Cog's gonna be pretty sour about that. He played it well, he was trying so hard to juke out the cocoon. This didn't happen. Wobbles was very patient, held it until he was right next to him, so he wouldn't miss the skill shot, which is exactly what you should do. Now, Sona. It's actually taking the lead over Janna in CS with 3 to 0. Sona's going to recall at this stage in time. Uh, the wave, I feel, is going to push. It might actually equalize, so I take that back. Very well played. Uh, nice reactions from this Shen in the bot lane. To fire that Stan United. He only just got 6 as it happened. So, very timely. And Adempt is pulling ahead in CS now, and he's dumped the creep wave into the turret and he's going to go back as well. So we're seeing the first couple of items being started on these players. Uh, Diana is definitely going to go for that abyssal scepter like I talked about in Champion Select. Ari has actually opted for a Chalice of Harmony. Um, that's actually slightly unconventional. It is an MR item which will help her out against Diana and Lang, but Death by Grass has been the rush on almost every single Ari and, and competitive gaming. So Slightly different. She could definitely transition from a Chalice into Death by Grass, but then again, it is worth noting that it is slightly different from from the regular, just so you guys are aware. So Elise has come back. Uh, there's still, let me just check for you, a minute and 40 seconds until Cogmore's flash is back up. So he has that window, and whether there's another easy gank on Cogmore. So he's got that ability timed, and he's pretty much abusing that pink ward in the river, abusing the ability he has to lock them up, and being very patient as Cogmore keeps showing himself. So at least he's coming into lane again. It's already applied red buff. Condemn is good. Kun is good and Cogmore dies again. Very well played by Wobble. Being very patient and it's definitely paying off. Uh, Cogmore was slightly extended there and there was no ward in that river. 
didn't know Elise was there and got punished for it. And it looks like they might pressure this turret as well. And there is no turret minion this way. It's actually on the next way. But it looks like they might get it anyway. Meanwhile in the mid lane, sorry, I completely missed that. Vi actually got a nice knockout onto Diana, and Ari went in with the full combo. Uh, the flash was out from Diana, but just watering us. And the turret does die in the top lane. First game of the turret, 2 DGR. Well played, guys. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, the Whitney was about to continue. Uh, Dragon's actually being picked up by the Spy and it's Ari. Very concise play, uh, knowing that there's no vision there, picking it up with uh, no vision, and they probably still don't know at this point. There was no pings down from Team BGR, and the gold has been equalized 12.8 to 12.8. So, good pick up. They lost the turret, got the Dragon, got a kill in the mid laner, so it's always good. So many members for VGR. Yeah, there is. Um, I'll link you guys to the page again. If you want to see who their subs are and all that kind of good stuff, it's all on the page. So they have been following our rules, which is always nice. Um, and they have been playing with listed players. So they do have a full roster. I think it's something like three subs and the five members, but nice full team. So Cogmore has only picked up his Vampiric Scepter at this stage in the game. He's definitely going for Blade of the Rune King, but isn't any considerable way there compared to Vayne sitting on a Bilgewater Cutlass. Uh, Vayne's also gone to the bot lane, scoping the lanes up now that they have their first turret, and putting Vlad on the top. And Vlad might have enough wave there at this point in time to keep this turret alive, which is definitely what they don't want. Vyas actually holding bot at the moment, and the turret's already taking a lot of damage. They turned this one down while there was a turret menu. I wouldn't be surprised if they did get the turret replaced. Uh, Shin might be able to do something if they taunt under the turret, but it looks like they're getting free damage off at this point in time. And they just keep coming back in, getting taps off, and if they stay around to pressure it, I, I would not be surprised if they get it in the next wave or so. So Cogmore against Vlad on the top lane. Vlad getting so much damage off in one combo, it actually eats a huge power cord from Sona though, and takes a lot of life. He does have a Hextech Revolver, so he will be still vamping up as the lane continues. Meanwhile in the bot lane, Shen taking so much damage. At least does repel him, trying to Diego the turret. Does so successfully, but this turret has 100 HP and it is down. Second turret of the game picked up by VGR. We've actually got Pog and Sona chasing this Vlad on the top lane. Crescendo was used, but it was not successful and getting from that kill. Chana actually steals away both the golems from this fight. I'd be pretty <laughs> sour about that if I was the fight. Nice play from Valve support, picking those up. So, pushing Blood out of lane leaves Cog and Sona. The ability to pressure this top turret. I feel like they don't have enough damage to get it this way, but they'll definitely get a lot of damage onto it, which is always helpful. Meanwhile, Vayne, Janna, Elise and Diana are sieging this mid turret. They've done some brilliant transitions, already gone bot and gotten that turret, have gone mid, and they're gonna get this one as well. They are just base tanking it, they're actually gonna step away. 470 HP left on this turret, and very nice play. Uh, Vlad has returned, as I predicted, the turret did not go down, sitting on 600 HP. So, unsuccessful for Vlad and, uh, sorry, unsuccessful for Cogmore and Sona, picking up that first turret. Uh, Cogmore actually cancelled this teleport. This can be very bad for me. Play and Ignite do come down. It looks like Vlad is gonna be able to pick up the kill on Cogmore. Bad luck. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Vayne has picked up Vi, they're going on Shin as well. Aren't going on to turret just yet, at least is tanking turret with a spidling, and turret is gonna go down. 1 to 4 in favor of VGR. 18.5k to 16.6k, 3 turrets to 0, and Vlad is pressuring this bot turret, and the momentum is definitely, definitely in favor of VGR. They're definitely. I know I keep saying that word, I'm sorry guys. They are copying what they've seen in professional play, and that is exactly what you should do. You should observe, you should imitate, and you should replicate. Those are the steps that you need to take to become a pro team. And these guys are definitely showing off that they've watched these games, that they've understood what they're doing, and they are now replicating what they've seen in professional play, and it's definitely working out for them. Ari's now picking up blue buff. She has finished that Athene's Unholy Grail. She didn't transition out to death by a grass block I expected. Diana has picked up Seeker's Arm Guard, the core component for Zonia's Hourglass, as well as that Negatron Cloak. So she has some nice ability power sitting on 88, 
but she has even better resists, sitting on 85 and 95 respectively. So very tanky Diana build, which is kind of surprising, but at the same time, Team VGR have enough damage coming from other sources that Diana has the luxury to do that. Now, they know that red buff is up, they do have a ward on it, and it looks like they might be trying to take this one away. Blood and Stone and Cogmo are all back in the top lane. Um, Cogmo really needs to take this turret away. He needs to be able to push Blood away and get that global goal for his team. Uh, so everyone's backed away from this red buff. There are a lot of red supports down. It looks like they are going to be taking it now. Uh, Elise has come in, so they do have that smite assurance. But it is going to be... Oh, actually, it was trying to be given to the Bane, but Elise's spy links took it. They're now collapsing down on this Shen. Shen sees it though, backs off, and the turret is probably going to go down this wave, in my opinion. They do have a turret minion, they've timed that brilliantly. Huge cast minion wave as well. And the turret is just being melted by these auto attacks. Successful Cocoon as well, at least going off the Shen very aggressively, repels away. Diana coming from behind everyone, and it looks like Divius are just going to back up. Nice combo coming up with the Diana. Blowing up the Cogmo, Cogmo already forced the barrier. Nice spawn on the Diana, she's disengaging. Diana got the flash out. Spawn is good, Charm is good, and she goes down. It looks like the rest of Nivius are now going to chase. Janna doesn't have a flash. There's a flash taunt coming out from the Shen, and he does have flash. They could result in another kill. Meanwhile, Vlad is just pushing so aggressively in this top lane. Doing so much work. Pings have gone down from Nivius onto the mid turret of VGR. It looks like they might want to transition mid and pick that up. Pink Ward's going down around the dragon. There was a ping very timely. It means that they have that time. They know it was coming up, and they didn't want Nivius to have it. So, good map awareness from VGR while they're peeling away to focus on those objectives. And I am a demp on Vlad is actually gonna pick up at this turret from full HP, 100 to 0 the turret and one turret minion wave. So a very good play. Shen's actually going onto this bottom and it looks like he's gonna chase as well. The other members of Nivius are actually collapsing, coming around from all the sides. Vlad has killed potential on his Shen, he needs to blow his entire hit now though. He looks like he does go down. Isn't gonna pick anyone up, and the Sona takes that kill away. That's the last person they wanted to go to, but it's better that the Vlad dies to one member than he do doesn't die at all. Meanwhile, Diana and Elise are pressuring this mid turret. Bane and Janna have recalled, alleviating some of the map pressure, but not a lot. Nivius have a little bit of breathing room until they arrive again, but not a lot. Uh, Ninku Poop on Bane has picked up the Lair of the Rune King, is gonna be transitioning to the Zeal. I uh, hasn't called for the bonus for it, but hasn't got the money to complete the recipe. Worst player at NZ has finished his walk on Cogmore as well, but isn't any closer to picking up a Spanner Dancer or Static Shiv. Uh, other core items we're seeing being completed is Aegis on Vi. We've actually got double GP5s on Sona and not a Ruby Sidestone, which is slightly unconventional. Uh, Elise has gone into Magic Pen before she's built her Spirit of the Elder Golden, but she's got quite a lot of HP anyway, so that's probably alright at this point in time. And we're just seeing. A very standard Vladimir build, he's already had two core items, so very strong. And wow, the Elise does a third of Cosmo's HP with her Spiderlings and her... I'm gonna just remove the name, I swear. Neurotoxin. So nice damage coming out from her as well. Vlad just bullying the Shin along in the top wave. Just running after him actually, just ignoring the creeps, just doesn't care. It could be because the rest of his team was coming to collapse on the Shin. Shen is just completely bugging out of the situation though. It's gonna be absolutely fine. So, I think Nivius do have a, a good chance of being able to bring this game back. They need to protect their objectives, they need to give Hog as much farm as humanly possible. They can come back into this game with this hyperscaling. They definitely have the team for it. It's just whether or not VGR let them back in. Uh, at this point in time, with the advantage that VGR does have in objectives, it's definitely their game to lose. They've played a very solid game so far, they just need to keep it up and pressure down these outer turrets. With 5 turrets already at 18 minutes in the game, it's definitely looking good for them. Uh, that 5 turrets has culminated in a 3000 gold advantage, so that is quite a big advantage for this stage in time. Not insurmountable though. So I, I hold faith that Nivius can bring this one back. We're actually seeing a death bush being set up. Uh, Elise is baiting in the bot lane. Vlad actually coming down to join her. Oh, no, backing up again. Very indecisive. Uh, Elise wants to draw someone down to deal with her and wants her team to jump them. 
And it doesn't look like Nivius is going to do that, so... They may have called it, they may have been seen by a ward. Um, it just doesn't look like they're going to take the chance. So, nice, concise play from... from Nivius. Kind of seeing that and... predicting it and not, not falling for it. Vi actually smites away the tower minion, making the siege a little bit harder, as tower minion can you know, survive 5 or 6 target hits. So, definitely giving the terrorist HP up there. Uh, Cog actually got condemned there by Vi. A lot of damage, and Vi is going in! Shit wants to come down onto Vi as well, and it looks like they are going to be down to this Vayne. Vayne, however, is 1v1 in this Vi, no problem at all. Shit missed up a double kill there, but Zen and Vlad going down, even Blake is good. Ari misses the charm on Wobble. Gonna get away. Cogmo still alive, flashes away. Unbelievable play from Nivius. Really handing it to them. Three. Oh, actually, Shen just died, giving a shutdown goal to Vayne. That's definitely not what they wanted to happen. That is a three for two in favor of Nivius. It was a one for three, but Shen got a little bit greedy there. So, very, very nice play. They took that team fight away. Uh, the Ari and the Cogmo had brilliant positioning. Cogmo pretty much had. The luxury of auto-attacking through that entire fight, he had consistent, sustained damage, and that, that is exactly what you want. Uh, his range definitely helped out with that. Bio, Arca Bio Arcane Barrage, bringing his range up by a considerable margin, so... Really nicely played. Uh, they've actually brought the gold back to about a 2,000 gold lead, so it's slowly closing in. And I do believe that they can take this game away. Uh, they can bring it back just through that Cogmore, really. Um, no pressure on Lewis Flair in Z, uh, but he's the only member of his team that is going to be able to get big enough to, to make the difference. His team has to get them there, so no denying the, the part in it, but the Cogmore is the champion for it. And Cogmore looks like he's going to get his first red of the game, which is always nice. Cogmore with red, he can apply that from very far away, can kite better, um, does a little bit more damage, and all that good stuff that you always love on an AK. However, we're seeing Team VGR group this Baron though. Shin gets caught, a very nice taunt over the wall, um, a lot of players would have failed that. It was a hard point to do it from, it is a hard ward to, to taunt across. We're actually seeing a Baron bait here from VGR, so they have everything warded, they know where they are. They've got vision on the Baron, they might know that it's a bait. Diana actually showed themselves, and Nivius aren't falling for this. Brilliant play from Nivius from calling that. And just being very wary as they went in there. That was brilliantly set up by VGR, but it was called. Uh, Sona now with her oracles. There is no oracles. Let me double check. Yep, no oracles on VGR. At this point in the game, it is necessary to have one. There are so many walls on the map, you need that oracles to gain and maintain that. So just let me bring up Twitch chat. The Bay Life going out. I like it. So Vayne is 4, 0, and 2. She is gigantic. Uh, plays very safely, very securely, and is capitalizing on people's mistakes. She's never stumbled into a bad situation. So, very, very consistent play. Um, very safe play. So I'm really liking the way that Ninkapoop is playing this Vayne. Pinks are going down onto Dragon. Both teams know it's there. Both teams know it's alive. And it's just whether or not they'll put down wards, or they'll force it, or they'll, you know, back off and, and wait for the team to go for it and try and make... Try to see if they can capitalize on another mistake. And it looks like... They really don't want to go for it with, with the team sitting there, so... We're seeing a bit of a dragon dance, and they have started it, so VGR are going for it. They are sitting on a ward, as it happens. Sona is actually leading it. So she could be clearing walls, she could be looking for a presenter. Nice charm of the bubble squad. The Janna is taking a lot of damage. So close on Vayne. Uh, Vi actually takes so much damage. Vi's three match and Shendo coming out. Shen taunts three people as well. So much CC. And this Cogmore is being dived by the blood. Cogmore does pick up the kill though, and we've got four members of VGR coming very aggressively after this shit. Shen's gonna go down. That's three to one in favor of VGR. Triple kill for the Vayne now sitting on seven, zero, and two. Nice! Charm coming out again on Ninkapu. Charming the Vayne, getting some nice damage out with all the deception. And there's two members left for Nivius. And can they prevent what's going to happen? Can they prevent either the, the Baron or the turret pressure? And it is looking like they're going for turret pressure. So, no home guards on either member of the team. 
for the buy that it's just spawned, so it doesn't look like they're gonna get back to lane incredibly quickly, but they are gonna be able to protect in a turret. Exactly what they want. So nice wave flare, nice damage coming out from the members, and it looks like VGR are just gonna back off. So nice play by them. They got the dragon, they picked up a triple kill, and on a thing. Uh, those are all amazing things. Bane right now is actually sitting on 1,851 gold to spend. So she's going to go back and buy something very pretty for herself. Um, and uh, probably is going to go show it off next team fight. Diana actually coming in, getting a nice moonfall off. Uh, bringing the members in. I'm surprised that the team didn't collapse on that. I think it was even surprising to her how many people she fought into it. So it's understandable that the team didn't fall up. Shen is now split pushing in the bot lane. He does have 47 seconds until Stan United is back up. Uh, unless Team VGR has timed that, they will not know that Shen does not have Stan United up. So it's a bit of a bluff um, keeping him down there, saying like, yeah, you have to come deal with me. If, if you go into a team fight, I will come in with my Stan United. Uh, pings are actually going down. Shen might be able to taunt. Alright, so he's actually going to back off. Cast, cast his curse. Thought it was going to happen. It didn't. Sorry for getting you all excited. I can see you. Excited behind your computer screen. Oh god. Vlad's damage has reached a breakpoint. Uh, he almost one shot an entire wave with that Tides of Blood. Let me just check how much damage he's gonna do with it. Um, Custom has 400 HP. Alright, so he's doing at least 400 damage. Probably a lot more than that. Our stream is really laggy. Sorry guys. Uh, we're actually running, I think, 1080p at the moment. Or it might even be 720p. Uh, so it won't be your side because we're running on a fiber line and we're not getting packed with loss. But it'll be that a New Zealand connection can't actually watch this game. We might lower it the next game. Um, that's their problem. Fly actually going in, it's all the battery. Bane is so low. Shenzhen United comes across as well. Taunt isn't good on Bane. Bane cutting so well. It does go down low to it might drop Shen. And Vladimir is the next person. Charm does miss. Cogmore going after him. Not gonna chase him up though. That's really interesting. Actually, no, we do see the flash. Uh, I am dead. He's trying to run away. This is living artillery. Was very confident it was going to land, and Vlad peeling away. Uh, Arya was actually caught out by Elise and Jana, and we're seeing so much indecisiveness from the team here. And execute on higher gem. Well played. We got being stolen away here. A uh, nice play from from VGR to turn a bad team fight around. So worst player of NZ uh, was very indecisive with who he was going to focus fire in those last few seconds. He played the rest of the team fight bri brilliantly. It ended up that Ari got caught out because Elise and Jana were there, and Vlad actually got himself executed because worst player uh, was overconfident that his living artillery would kill him, but it didn't even hit him. So unfortunate play there, uh, just being very overconfident in his actions. We're actually seeing. Diana go in very aggressively. Cogmo is gonna punish her for this. Sonya's hourglass does come out, but there's no way she's gonna get out of this. And unfortunately, Insane Pain does go down. This turret is sitting on a 13 HP as well. It's uh, undeniable in my eyes that it's gonna go down in this next wave. And there we go. The turret is down. So, two turrets to six, 10 kills to 13. And a slight gold advantage, uh, 2,000 gold in favor of BGR. Nice cocoon onto the Sona. Let's see if the team follows it up. And the exhaust has gone down on the Vlad event. The photo battery and taunt do come in though. Vlad taking so much damage, he still does have that sound beautiful. He has so many powers as well. Ari is now the focus fire for team BGR. And Bane does pick her up with triple kill. Gets the card more, triple kill as well. Can she make this a quadra? Jin taking so much damage and we are going to see a quadra kill. Let's see what they do now, now that the members have gone down. It looks like it might be a Baron, but that was a clean ace for Team VGR. Quadra kill on Ninka Poop's Bane, was now sitting 11, 1, and 4. Amazing play. And uh, Baron taking so much damage now. Uh, I think they're just going to pick this one up. They're not going to have trouble with trading aggro or anything like that. There's no one to contest it. So a Baron does go to VGR. First Baron of the game. Now everyone's recalling, they're sitting on a nice amount of gold. The Vayne has another 2,000 gold to spend in the bank. Um, that's very scary. She has picked up a Phantom Dancer, Static Shiv, and Quick Silver Sash. So definitely opting for the attack and move speed style build. Uh, popularized in the OGN. Um, slightly different the way we play it in the NA LCS, which is Infinity Edge or Bloodthirst or Rush. 
they don't opt for the blade of their own king. Um, it hasn't really been proven which one is more efficient. It just comes down to player preference and what you can play better and how you can be more effective with your itemization. So Ninky Poop definitely knows what he likes and he's already hit. Uh, let me just double check before I. 1.96 attack speed. So that is a huge amount of attack speed. We'll be popping those silver bolts rapidly, um, which is exactly what you want. Now, her living uh, final hour, her ultimate, does give her an AD steroid, an extra 40 attack damage. So she's definitely not hitting lightly either, and she is hitting often. Uh, Shen has actually picked up red buff as they do see Nivius come in very, very aggressively. Shen has vision on all five members at the moment. He's probably going to need to use the to get out. He does so, uh, mitigates a lot of the damage as well with his shield. That are faint. So nice play from Shen getting out. So BGR are on the offensive. Um, we'll be looking to push down these turrets, but however, they don't have a creep wave to do so at the moment. Uh, turret minions have just spawned at base, so they do have that on the next wave if they were looking to push down a turret 2 inhibitor. It'll be interesting to see how they do that, how they pressure on turret, as they have a, uh, as Nivius have a very, very proficient turtle team. Uh, Charm is very dangerous, Taunt is very dangerous, and Cogmore's range is very dangerous to go after in a siege. So, in my opinion, they need to not wait around for a poke fight or anything like that. They need to hard initiate and try to blow someone up and try and make something happen. Otherwise, it could be a, a very horrible siege onto one of these turrets. Uh, Ari's wave character at this point in time as well is incredibly good. She has got that ability set for and has bought a Fiendish Codex, which will eventually be a death by grass. So she's doing a lot of damage. This is an orb of deception on Janna, but her other abilities do land, and Janna takes a huge amount of damage, but the Baron buff will regen that up. That purple buff is so good at the moment. Shen actually bullying Vlad in the bot lane. Vlad has just gone below half HP. Shen is so tanky, sitting on a Negatron Cloak and Spirit Visage. And Vlad flashes over the wall, has to get a Janna shield to mitigate the ignite damage, and this is going to be an unsuccessful siege. What you need to do is not overextend at this point in time, and there's no way that BGR are going to be able to use this Baron buff to make anything happen in, in the next minute or so. Everyone's recalling out from BGR, um, they do have a little bit of money in the bank, Pimpin 80 is it to spend. 1700 on Diana, so she's definitely going to go back and get a needlessly large rod or something like that. And of course she proves me completely wrong by getting a Blasting Wand. Um, thanks Diana. True friend. Vlad is now pushing the top lane. Our Baron buff is still on Vayne, still on Elise, and Diana and Janna. So, just on Vladimir. Uh, only not on Vladimir. And that Baron buff still has a little bit of time left, 20-25 seconds before it times out. But definitely not going to be able to use it to siege a turret though. Um, very nice play by Shin. Just bullying that Vlad out of lane. Taking him so low that he does need to recall. And they're obviously not going to siege in a 4v5 situation. So, well played by them. Alright, so Vlad may come a huge team of play. Vine has come across the wall though. Stand United is good. Shin hasn't arrived yet though. Stand United wasn't going to bring him in because he did die. Janna is now taking the brunt of the damage. He does go down. Cosmo is getting into the back doing so much damage. He has to run out of the way. He's probably going to try recall and get back in. Shin is now the focus of the Bane. Bane is so much damage, so, so much attack speed and so much move speed. It looks like they're going to try to get this mid turret though and maybe the end of it. So it, it's going to be 2v3. Three. three members of Nivius just went down so quickly. And the inhibitor is now the focus of BGR's attention. It's taking a lot of damage. Bane is so, so powerful at the same time. And it doesn't look like they're going to give up here. They are going down for this, this quad turret as well. Cosmo has a right though. He does a very, very decent damage. If he can get those bar bio arcane barrage and auto attacks off. And it looks like BGR are just going to back up. That was a successful play for them. They did get a turret. They did get an inhibitor. They won a team fight as well. They're probably going to back up and get objectives like buffs and maybe the next dragon and Baron is going to be up soon as well in the next two or three minutes. So they're going to back up, cash in and go from there. And again, this is definitely VGR's game to lose. They are in the driver's seat. They're sitting at 7,000 gold lead, almost 8,000 gold lead now. 21 to 31 in their favor. 7 turrets to 2. And these global objectives are just making all the difference. Uh, having that gold from the dragons and the turrets got them an early island lead and they're really snowballing it now. 
So pings haven't gone down anywhere from Nivius in a while. It doesn't look like they are pinging out objectives that they want to contest or take for themselves. And um, that's never a good place to be in. You know if your team doesn't really want to look at Dragon or doesn't want to look at Red Bull, Blue Bull, that's generally not a great place to be. Um, it means that you've lost map control, you've lost vision, and you're not happy with how things are currently going in duels or team fights. So disregarding those objectives might come back to bite them. However, Dragon and Baron aren't up and they're the most important ones. So they're not being punished for it almost at all at the moment, which is always good. So they're minimizing damage. Um, and we're seeing all the members except Vayne of Vija group in the top lane. So we've got Vayne still pushing the bot. He does have a Banshee's Veil. Um, I think she might have even sold it to some Sash. That's interesting. So she's in the bot lane. We'll probably be looking to split push by herself and have four members of VGR pressure top. That means the more members are going to be up by Baron if it does spawn as well. So it's a well thought out plan. And they're looking to pressure, pressure this objective, the, the top turret and top head of it. Uh, mid isn't pushing as much as they'd probably like at the stage in time. Uh, super creeps are spawning, but they haven't chucked down the lane just yet. Uh, good job done by Nivius of pushing the wave up so that it does alleviate pressure. So it's going to be Shen and Vayne in this spot lane. Uh, Vayne coming straight in, getting a nice condemn off on this Shen. Uh, looking to duel him in fact, trying to proc as many silver bolts as humanly possible, trying to chew through his huge amount of HP. And then Gibu does pick up that, that turret, and it's looking straight for the inhibitor. And this is uh, really bad for Nivius, as they cannot be in two places at once. No one except maybe Ari can duel this Vayne. And Nicky Boop actually going in. And Shin's missed the taunt. Charm is good though, and Vayne is probably going to die here. There's no oracles to find her. Sona is actually bringing it in. And Vayne getting away. Vayne, uh, Vi goes in. Being a nice little battery off. And does shut her down. But as Vayne dies, so does their inhibitor. Um, that is unfortunately the power of a dead Vayne split switching. Send too many people down to deal with her, and you lose objectives. And they're gonna lose a Baron as well as the inhibitor off the back of it. So really well played by Ninkin Poop, he was the sacrificial lamb for his team. They really paid for getting that kill. Um, and that's, again, a place that you really do, would not rather be. Uh, getting a kill should be seen as successful, it shouldn't be seen as, oh wow, we got a kill, but we lost the inhibitor and we've lost our Baron opportunity. Well played by VGR for forcing him into a situation like that. Uh, well played by Nivius for getting the kill. Um, Vayne, I thought, was going to get away right until the end. Did require that insult battery. We're seeing Nivius actually coming down here, trying to make something happen. He looks like has gone down. Falkmore has almost, almost run out of mana. Falkmore was trying to get him to be at least. Uh, it looks like Vlad might go down here. Has flashed over the wall. Nice over perception though. Already flashes, thinking she's not going to get the kill, but Vlad did die to that very... Well placed over perception. It got him both on the initial damage and on the return almost instantly, so he just blew up. Well played. So Shen just picking up golems now, um, needs the gold. They need the items. They're very tanky, um, both Shen and Vi. So they make a really good front line, especially with the Stan United on Vi for the Assault and Battery Initiate. But unfortunately, Vayne just blows through tanks. Um, Silver Boss is a huge percentage damage, and it's really showing off what she can do in team fights. It looks like after she picked up the Banshee's Veil, she is going to be going for a BF Sword based item. Uh, most likely an Infinity Edge, as Bloodbuster wouldn't really help her out at the stage in time. Um, she has enough attack damage, she's just going to look for that high enough crit. Uh, Jana actually doing a very offensive Mosquito, trying to make a play happen on Ari. Ari is forced to use a flash. Uh, I'm surprised she didn't go with the Spirit Rush, but she got out alright. Oh, so she did use both flash and Spirit Rush. Sorry, I take that back. So well played. So it looks like they're going to be sieging this bottom inhibitor and probably the mid inhibitor as well, which recently spawned. And I wouldn't be surprised if they push from there and still win. At least getting a nice cocoon on the RA, but the team's not there to finish that one up. She actually uses a repel to dodge a bunch of skill shots, so well played by Wobbles there. And the siege continues. Um, there is a turret minion and the next wave coming for VGR, so they'll be able to use that. There are spirit, uh, super minions already sieging the inner turrets as well for the inhibitor. 
and it looks like it's, another, it's just taking a little bit of damage every wave and it will eventually be chipped down unless they look to initiate and that is the Baron buff on several members of Team PGL so that makes their job even harder as they do have that sustain and damage increased and the inhibitor does go down in the middle just to creep as well uh, Cosmore has been forced to come back try and defend the next uh, Stan United is being used, they're trying to get up this thing. Bang just blows up the fire. Shen taking so much damage as well, it's gonna go down. Insane Pain picks up that kill for his killing tree. And this looks like it's gonna be the Inhibitor, the Nexus, and the game. In favor of EGR. So very well played. We're actually seeing uh, probably the MVP of this game is Nikki with 13, 2, and 5. A very, very fair thing. Uh, Adept just Nexus dives, uh, gets zapped by the Tower Fountain, so that's it. Good game well played in favor of EGR, leading this best of 3, 1 to 0. And I will be taking a small break as we get this next lobby set up. Um, stay around though guys, and we'll be getting into the next, next game, game 2 of this semi-finals.